happiness isn't some bonus you get at the end, like if you struggle enough or if you work hard enough. It's not something you achieve your way into. Happiness is something you do. When I was 13 years old, my parents and I escaped from what was then Soviet Union. We spent uh, the next three months in a really large refugee settlement with hundreds of thousands of other Russian Jews. We flew into New York, I kissed the ground, absolute cheese ball, and then we flew to Detroit, where we would live in a settlement and a housing project for a year. And if we're always chasing goals, I love what you said about the fact that when we get there, we're actually not there because we're not there to experience it. The most important thing you're doing in your life is what you're doing now. The thing that we have to recognize is that being present doesn't mean, you know, sitting in a dark room, you know, meditating. That's one way. Being present is just paying attention to whatever it is you're doing. Focusing on small positive moments that are part of our everyday has been scientifically proven to fundamentally change how positive we feel. It's called Happier and joining us today is the CEO and Chief Happiness Officer responsible for it, Natalie Kogan. Welcome to the show, Natalie. We're coming to the United States and we land in the projects outside of Detroit in 1989 with 600 bucks and six suitcases, two suitcases per person. And I was like, okay, the American dream is to be happy, so I'm gonna be happy. And the only way that I figured out how to feel that was any time I achieved something. And so for the next 20 years, I went on what I call the chase of my big happy. I graduated from West with high and university honors. I got a job at McKinsey, became a venture capitalist at the ripe age of 24, started a publishing company, was recruited eventually to work at Microsoft, ran a consumer team of a startup here in Boston that was very successfully acquired by PayPal. All of these things made me really proud. I still am so proud. I work my butt off for every single one of these things, but none of them made me happy. I found myself pretty unfulfilled and also feeling really guilty. Like, why wasn't I happy if I've achieved all this stuff? So I started looking at the science and what I kept reading in one research paper after another at first made no sense to me. That there's these very simple scientifically proven practices that have been shown to dramatically increase our sense of emotional well-being. And this is what I call living fully. It's truly the ability to experience all the moments in our lives, the good and the bad. Eighty percent of American employees say that they're either not very engaged with their job or not engaged in their jobs at all. Seventy-five percent say they're stressed or overwhelmed at work. And the estimates vary, but it's somewhere around $450 billion is the cost of that disengagement and stress to the economy. People with a more positive outlook are healthier, have fewer heart attacks and strokes, they're more productive, they're more creative, they work better on teams at work, they're more innovative, they have better relationships, the list of benefits goes on and on. Consistently, researchers have found that companies that have overall more positive employees are more profitable. And so while I still was a skeptic, I decided to give it a shot, almost like an experiment. What I learned really changed my life and changed my outlook, and I became inspired to start a company called Happier uh, with one vision, truly one goal, and that is to encourage millions of people to stop saying, I'll be happy when, and to start saying, I'm happier now because. I always thought the way to deal with negative emotions is to run the other way. So you feel stressed out, you run towards joy. But the thing is, you cannot run away from a pile of negative feelings. Eventually, it spills out. It got so big for me that it started to affect every area of my life. I'd only been focusing on one half of what it really means to be genuinely happy. I had never learned how to process negative emotions, to actually feel them and do something with them. I'd been collecting them from those days back in the refugee camp and in the project I didn't know what to do with them then, and so I ran away from them through achievements. And in a way, I was using gratitude and kindness and mindfulness as a band-aid on top of them. I 
had to realize a big part of becoming genuinely happier is learning how to be okay when things are not okay. It's boosting what I call our emotional immune system. We all know we have an immune system, right? So what does our immune system do when a germ enters our body? A healthy immune system doesn't go, okay, I'm just gonna focus on what's working in the body and this. If it did that, we would get very, very sick. How do you do this? How do you experience more joy and strengthen your emotional immune system? I boiled it down to four core practices. The first one is what I call mindful awakeness. Simply the ability to be here now in this moment without leaning into the past or into the future. The second is a gratitude zoom. Our brains are naturally conditioned to look out for the negative. Simply asking your brain to come off the autopilot and instead focus on some small positive things that are already here. It seems like a really small principle. The, the key to it is that you do capture these moments somehow, that you are uh, aware of them. And how you capture them doesn't matter. You can write them down, you can take a snapshot of them. The third is what I call intentional kindness. The number one quality that people who report highest life satisfaction and well-being have in common is the strength of their social connections. And the fourth is what I call the bigger why. It's very hard for us to live well, to live fully, if we don't have a sense of purpose. Now, meaning doesn't have to come from work. It can come from something that you're creating. It can come from taking care of someone but it's not an arbitrary quality, it's something that comes from us. So these are the four practices for experiencing more joy within everyday moments and strengthening your emotional immune system so you can be okay when things are not okay. My life's work is to help people in all contexts, at work, in their personal life, learn and practice these incredibly simple but profound scientifically proven techniques to increase their emotional well-being. I've created a happier workout, a workout for your brain. There's one thing that I do every day that's my favorite thing is I write down three small things that I appreciate about my day. Paying attention teaches you much more about that whole experience because it's happening to you anyway. So I didn't miss the moment that could have been so precious to me for the rest of our lives together. What, I, what I'm hearing is Take the guilt away. What People who were interacting with Happier wanted to bring me into their workplaces, and I've now spoken at hundreds of venues. The one thing that I have learned from all that is just how much we all have in common when it comes to our happiness at corporations, at conferences, at nonprofits, at high schools, at colleges, as different as these audiences are that I speak to, the message and the techniques and the practices resonate. So I thought we should um, end this talk by everyone sharing a happy moment together. Think of someone right now that you really, really care about. I always think of our daughter Mia. What kind of life do you want that person to have? I think all of us would say we want them to be happy. We want them to have meaning. We want them to be with people they love, right? But the thing is, you can't give to others what you don't have yourself. Practicing these things we talked about is not just something great that you can do for yourself. It's, I think, the greatest gift that we can give to people that we love and care about. <laughs>